Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Let's talk about this new lineup from HPE Networking Instant On Devices. These are a selection of access points. They also have switches and other devices as well to complete your small business network. All right, so here we are at this machine shop. Now this is a metal building um, that we're in and you can see, yes, we have a ladder and this is temporary install. You can see it has a older um, antenna up there that was for an old service that they no longer use. And so I want to make sure that this one works with the outdoor unit up there and we have a temporary uh, cable connection that gets um, it powered in there. But inside the shop, what you can see here is that it's all metal. And that's really the main problem with this is that any kind of signal, cellular Wi-Fi does not like to get through the metal outside. All the garage doors are metal and then also metal inside, metal ceiling inside and a metal roof. But here you can see we have a AP22D indoor unit that has ethernet hooked up to it. And this gives us really great signal throughout this room very easily. And then on the other side as well, we have a dividing wall that's also made of two layers of metal. And this whole uh, storage space that they have is um, now has great Wi-Fi connection with just a single AP that we put up here. That's right on the other side of that outdoor unit, so those two can talk to each other very easily. And then he gets full wireless connectivity in this full building for their work. This is a big game changer. Before they had this uh, HP networking instant on setup, they were, were basically relying on internet hotspots from their phone because they didn't have a good way to get the Wi-Fi out here because it's not just getting the Wi-Fi in the building but we're actually getting the Wi-Fi from another building 400 feet away with the outdoor unit. So that's what's really cool about this. And that's where this is really making a big difference to this business. This is a little bit of a rebranding that they're doing. It used to be um, Aruba Instant On, and they changed the name to HPE, which stands for Hewlett Packard Enterprises, uh, which they've always, uh, they've owned uh, Aruba Instant On for a while now, but now they are changing the branding somewhat. So I have five of their six Wi-Fi 6 certified devices here for AP access points. What I'll do is I'll go through the specs. Um, I'll show you these. I've already done a video specifically on this one, which is their most powerful access points, the biggest one. It's the AP25 unit. And um, now I'm going to compare it to these other ones. And what you'll see here is they basically have a device that is designed for all your different needs for your small business um, networking, including this outdoor unit, which is great for patios, backyards, um, you know, open venues there that you want to have outdoor coverage. This can be mounted outside, weatherproof, snowproof, all that kind of stuff, uh, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to install some of these devices. My uncle has a machine shop, and it is in a metal building, which is not great for wireless signals. So that's where having a setup like this is really great because you can connect these as a mesh system where they all will link together either through ethernet cables or they can actually do a wireless mesh between each other as well. So if you don't have a way to get ethernet to them, they can do that. Most of them also do either power over ethernet or they have a separate port as well for um, a plug-in like a 12 volt DC or some of these I think are um, 48 volt um, DC units. So what I wanna do here is show you what I have from smallest to biggest. The smallest one I have is the AP21, and this one is great for um, very you know subtle use. You can mount this on the wall, and um, it's going to give you great coverage uh, in a large room or whatnot for um, access. And they all come with kind of a mount that screwed onto the wall, and then these just rotate and click on, you know, and click off kind of like a um, a uh, smoke detector or whatnot. And they come with a uh, Ethernet cable as well. But the um, other thing that they can come in is a bundle or a kit. And when they do that, they'll also include a eight, uh, AC110 plug that allows you to power them directly if, uh, for example, you don't have Ethernet there or you don't have power over Ethernet set up. Uh, but a lot of their switches will have PoE plugs. So if you plug in the Ethernet cable to one of their switches, then that switch can power up these units as well. This next one that I have here is the AP32. This one is a nice unit as well, and this one's a little bit bigger and beefier, and therefore stronger of a signal and coverage and number of um, users that can connect to it. And then the AP25 is even further bigger and more powerful. And so again, 
um, you would decide which one best meets your needs. You know, obviously the downside of the bigger ones is they're a little bit um, bigger visually, and these other ones that are smaller are easier to hide. This is also a unique form factor here. This is the AP22D, which um, right now I have it on the desktop in um, mount, and you see it has Ethernet port out back here, but this just lifts up and off, and then it has an Ethernet cable that is attached back here, but that's to get to the Ethernet port in the back, but you don't have to use this at all. Instead, you can have this unit, and it comes with a kit that this attaches to a standard outlet like a gang uh, in the wall so if you have ethernet ran into gangs then this mounts onto that and then this simply just clips on and hops onto that um, unit as well and that is how you can have this nice low profile and it would just be mounted on a wall and what's really cool about this one is that on the bottom it actually has extra ethernet ports these other APs do not have an extra ethernet port so when you run an ethernet cable to them that's the only thing to go. You can't daisy chain another ethernet cable off of these APs from there, but this one you can, and that's really handy, for example, if you had this installed by a desk or a computer that you need ethernet. It has actually four ethernet ports down here, and two of them can be PoE output, so it can actually supply power over ethernet to other devices um, from this unit as well. So that's a really cool feature, I think, about this one, and um, I can see people using that a lot for um, a desk uh, situation as well. And then lastly here we have the uh, AP27, which is their outdoor radio unit. You can see it has a mount here that uh, this just slides down and holds on. You can put, you know, fasteners obviously in to, uh, to secure it. On the bottom it has a weatherproof ethernet jack. This plug unscrews and then they include a little collar here that um, is what you run your ethernet cable through. It has a rubber seal that when you tighten it down, that keeps that uh, weather tight connection there. So this is really great for an outdoor setup um, that you might have. So I have all but one. The only one I don't have here is the AP22 unit. And that one is basically a little bit of um, like this uh, 32 unit. It's a little bit smaller, um, but it basically, the 32 unit has a six gigahertz Wi-Fi band and um, it's got some more capability there. So it's very similar to this one, but it's just a little bit uh, cheaper, and it, uh, it's kind of a mix between the, um, the 21 and the 32 out there. But I'll show this screen here with all the details between them, and you do want to look at those and see, you know, some of them have some different capabilities than others, or they have um, extra bands, like I mentioned, on this uh, AP32 unit. Are they maybe designed for higher user counts, you know, 50 users or 75 users? That's just a rough guide. That's not like a hard cutoff. Um, but that's just telling you where you'll get the best performance out of them. So really you want to look at your own network and determine uh, which ones are the best fit for you. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to my uncle's shop and we are going to get some of these installed. We're going to figure out the best arrangement that we like. For that setup and then I'll show you how that improves his Wi-Fi connection there not only for his machine shop but also some of the other um, places around the machine shop in the building as well. Alright so here's the AP22D unit. Now this one has a optional desktop stand which comes included with the Ethernet port on the back side of it or if you take it off of this slide it off then you can have this uh, go to a wall mount as well. This back Ethernet port, the E0 port, is the only one that does the uplink back to your main switch or the internet. The four ports on the bottom of the unit only do downlink. Two of them are PoE capable, and then two of them are not PoE capable. It also has a 48 volt, one amp input as well if you want to provide power that way. So those are the, the different ports that are on this unit. I have not added this unit to our site yet, but here is a Ethernet cable. This is PoE equipped. And we're going to plug that in and power this up and then add this. It's the same process for pretty much all of these APs out there. All right, so we plug it in. We see the power light come on. It's going to go through a boot up process, take several minutes. While it does that, I'm going to grab my tablet and show you how I actually open up the app to add this. All right, so this is the Aruba Instant On app. I just open it up. This is available for lots of your different uh, devices. This is an Android tablet. Um, and so you do have to have an account. If you haven't set up an account yet, you do have to make one. Uh, it's very quick and easy to do that. 
All right, then once you're signed in, you can see I'm actually connected to that Aruba Wi-Fi already. It's connecting to another access point because this one is not set up yet. And it tells me that everything's okay. It shows you that I have three devices in the bottom right that are all online. And I have one connected client to it right now, which is this tablet. Now, what I want to do is add a new device. So I can do that a couple ways. The easiest is probably the hamburger icon on the top left and then hit add new devices. Now, there are a couple different ways to do this. So the easiest way is to extend it with a ethernet cable, but you can also do extended over the air. So that would be if your device does not have a direct ethernet connection back, it's just powered up, but it needs to use Wi-Fi mesh to get back to an AP. So those are the two different ways that you can do this and it tells you um, what you need to do in order to make that happen. So now that I have my lights, when it's flashing the red and amber uh, back and forth, I believe that's when I want to hit my search and I can hit the search icon. While it's doing that, it might take several minutes. You can also see I don't see my devices and this is showing you that it is um, what the different lights mean for you. And you can see there that it shows me amber to green alternating means that it's ready to add. So um, now I'm doing this search where it's trying to find it. All right, so there we go. It just found it. It does take a few minutes and I can click on it and click add device. And then I want you to just verify that's the one you want. You can look right here on the device as well to uh, see that name. Uh, most part, unless there's some other business right beside you trying to add their own at the same time, it would be the right device. Now, now what it's going to do is actually configure itself. And so I can say, give it a name. Obviously you want a name that's something uh, a little bit more descriptive than what they give it. Um, so I can give it um, a new name here. And then what you'll see here, the first thing it did is says that it went offline in this installing the software. Every one of these devices I've gotten so far, that's pretty much what it does. So I think they're constantly updating the firmware. And as soon as it gets an uh, internet connection, it wants to download that and install it. So it does take a couple more minutes after it does that. You'll see the lights be changing colors. And after a few minutes, it'll be up and online. And then we'll show you what all information you can see here in the app. All right, so now we can see um, all the green lights are on. So it did take a couple minutes, like I said, after the update for it to apply and reboot. And then what we can see here is even though I have the ethernet right now with the setup that we did, that ethernet is not connected to a switch or to one of the other APs directly. It's really just a power cable for right now. And so what that shows you here is that the over the air connectivity, which is how the uplink from this device is connected, is only a fair signal quality. So if you look here, this business is in a metal building. So effectively like a metal barn and both the inside panels, the roof and the outside panels are all still and it does a very good job of messing up your Wi-Fi signals. And so this one I have close to an outdoor unit and it's still able to get a fair signal or here it shows poor signal. We'll, we'll position this so that it gets the best signal. But our plan is to actually have it such that it has a ethernet connection back to the outdoor unit. So it is actually connecting wirelessly to an outdoor unit. That's the AP27 unit that is actually connecting to internet uh, to a building that's 400 feet away. It's easy clear line of sight just to feel that it goes through a parking lot, but it actually connects to the other building to get that internet from that building to this building. And now we're feeding it in through here. And like I said, we will be connecting um, a little switch. We need to get a switch to allow it to have a ethernet backhaul or backlink connection instead of using the Wi-Fi. But so in here, we can look through here and see what it, um, it shows. You can see that all the ports are empty. It's showing you that the E0 port, which is this back one that's plugged in, only has power and it doesn't show you any data connection there. And then it shows you the bottom ports here are also currently not used, but I think, um, the business will actually start to use those um, to provide some ethernet connection in here as well. And then you can see um, that there's a client connected. That's me on the five gigahertz radio. Uh, you can go into more details here. We can see the different networks that it has. You can set up different VLANs in there as well. And then let's see what else we have here on the radio details. This one is you, if you want to do specific management for this one versus going on the site, or if you want to have, um, 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz management, you can do that. Um, but that is really when you set up at the site level and then all your APs, when you plug them in, they automatically adopt those site settings and it's seamless. Therefore, that is very easy um, to add new devices. 
All right, and then if we look here under network assignment, this one's where you can tell it if you want it to participate in all of the Wi-Fi networks that you have set up. And on this one, I have both of them connected, both Aruba and Aruba Guest. But obviously, if you want some APs to only do certain um, Wi-Fi networks, then you can have that selected here as well. All right, and we can go back here and we can see a couple other things. We can see topology. This is where it's showing you um, the connection that I'm talking about where we have one AP that is in the other building and is connected via Ethernet, PO, power over Ethernet. And then it actually has the wireless transmission 400 feet to this other building, which is this other AP here. And then it's showing you that that gets split from that outdoor unit into this one. And there's another AP on the other side because this building is split up by a wall. And again, this wall has metal on it. So it actually does a really good job of blocking that signal from one side to the other. And that's where we have two indoor APs, one outdoor AP here, and another AP at the other building uh, 400 feet away. So once we get all these devices connected, then you'll start to see these numbers increase right now. It's just this tablet that's connected to this one unit. Um, you can also click on it and you get a little bit more information. You can also hit some things like locate here. This is be helpful if you have a lot of the same units in a uh, same building or room. I can hit this locate button and click activate lights. And then what it's going to do is it flashes that light for you so that it will blink and you know which one uh, that device is in case you get confused. You can also do a connectivity test. This is where you basically just have it ping a specific IP address. So if you want to make sure it can ping something, you can do that here on your network. You can also put something in like a Google D DNS, like 8888, and um, it will check just if it has internet connectivity as well. All right, so here we go. Let's do a speed test. And this is connected to this one, which is then wirelessly connected to an outdoor unit. And that's wirelessly connected back to the other building. And you can see here, it looks like we're getting about 60, maybe 65 or 70 megabits per second down. All right, and there we go, we almost got eight up. So that is um, about half, I think, of what the other building is getting 400 feet away. But this is really good compared to what we get without that in here, uh, especially the upload capability. This unit is really great. And what's cool about it, like I said, is that right now, there's no ethernet connecting this unit to the other units. It's all wireless and it's mesh. And you saw, we set it up here. It's literally, you know, by the name instant on, it's almost instantly, it probably takes you about five or 10 minutes to add a new unit and set it up. So that's really cool. All right, so in here, if we were to use the cellular connection from the phone, even though it's actually really fast internet outside on the cellular, inside it blocks the signal, like I said. So I get about 45 down and three megabits per second upload. But once we hooked up the Wi-Fi, now um, again, the Wi-Fi is coming from another building, but we're getting 130 about down and about, I think 10 or so up. And that is almost effectively the speed that they get in the other building. So what it's showing you here is that this HPE networking instant on is providing me my full speed throughout their network. And I'm able to get past the challenges that this business had of poor signal penetration in different rooms with the metal building. So this really does fix the problem. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below. I will try to answer them. And of course, like and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks.